It's time to engage, educate, and empower with Tracy Maxfield. Hello and welcome to my podcast, Engage, Educate, and Empower. I'm your host, Tracy Maxfield. And as you know, every week we have a special guest from somewhere around the world who can talk to a particular subject which is very relevant to our children and teenagers everywhere. Topics include mental health, mental illness, suicide, and bullying. Now, I'm sure many of you, every time you've turned on the news or gone onto a social media site, you have seen a report of either a child or teenager who has been bullied or who has died because of bullying. And actually, the term we use for that is bully side. Now, bullying is an epidemic. Um, it's absolutely out of control. And really, we need to step up and do something because it's directly impacting our kids, their futures, their lives, their mental health and well-being. Now, every seven minutes, a child or teenager is bullied. And what's very interesting is that in the USA, every single day, 160,000 students skip school for fear of being bullied. Now, Two recent stories that have made the news headlines, if you remember, was a nine-year-old boy in Australia whose video went viral after he was bullied at school. Um, he was bullied because he has dwarfism and also because he's an Aboriginal. Then a few days later, the news story was about a nine-year-old boy in Chicago who's on life support because he attempted to hang himself because of bullying. And despite his mother going to the school many, many times and reporting it, nothing was done. So I'm hoping with these podcasts that you're able to listen to each guest's point of view and be very objective and open-minded hear what they're saying and see if maybe some of the things they share, then you're able to take that and help if you know of someone who's been bullied, if your child or teenager is being bullied, or if you just want to say no more bullying and want to make a difference in the world. So I'm very, very honored that today's guest is Anthony Caroni. Now, Anthony Caroni is actually um, a very famous Hollywood actor, producer, and director. And I'll briefly read you his bio before we go and meet him. So, Antonio Caroni um, has over 25 years in front of the camera, and he's been in many acclaimed films like We Own the Night, Bad Boys 2, Oz, and I Love You, Philip Morris. Amongst others, Antonio has held his own with many Golden Globe or Academy Award nominees or winners, including Robert Duvall, Mark Ruffalo, Joaquin Phoenix, Jim Carrey, Ben Stiller, and my favorite, Benicio Del Toro, to name a few. He is a very well-known and well-established character actor. His production skills on many indie films have helped investors realize returns on their investments for the past 15 years, including executive producing, writing, and co-directing the web series Sensation, The Mob King, which I watched. He recently won the coveted Best Short category in the Hell's Kitchen New York City Film Festival with Brass Nettles, which was a gritty exploration into the real-life issues we have in dealing with bullying. Anthony is also a very staunch activist and a volunteer. Not only does he run workshops for actors of all levels, but he volunteers for his local school system and he brings awareness to issues such as bullying. I actually met him through his uh, Facebook page. He's the founder and administrator of Antoni Crony's Stop Bullying Now, and his Facebook page actually has over 20 thousand members. So we're going to be taking a very brief commercial break and when we return I will be with Antoni Caroni 
who incidentally has taken time off from his schedule. He's actually filming a movie and he's on the movie set right now and has found a secluded closet to speak with me and so we can record his podcast. So coming up next, I am very blessed. Anthony Caroni. For more information about Tracy, her mission, the show, Tracy's book, and offered courses from Tracy herself, visit tracymaxfield.com. Be sure to catch the latest news on mental health and Tracy's guests on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. While you're visiting tracymaxfield.com, make sure to sign up for the free monthly newsletter. Keep track of Tracy with upcoming events, interviews, seasonal tips, and the latest articles on important mental health issues. Plus, when you subscribe, you'll get a copy of Tracy's booklet, Why Our Kids Are Suffering, and How We Can Help Them. For more information and to sign up, go to tracymaxfield.com. Parents, do you worry about your children or teens? Do they have issues they don't talk to you about? Go to tracymaxfield.com to sign up for Tracy's informational courses. Tracy has brought connection to parents and teens all over the world. To learn more, visit tracymaxfield.com. A brighter future is possible. So welcome back, everybody, and I'm absolutely thrilled to speak with Anthony Carone, who you can see right now has a weird backdrop behind him. He but does. He's, he's in a closet. <laughs> <laughs> he is actually on location, and so he's taking time out of his very busy schedule to speak with us, and I am most greatly appreciative of that. So we connected on Facebook, actually, through your Stop Bullying Facebook page a few weeks ago. And I guess the first question I want to ask you is, what prompted you to start the Facebook page? Well, to make a long story short, I'm a writer and a director and an actor and a bad guy professionally. And <laughs> I was looking at a potential feed for a series. And I saw that bullying was a problem that we have in society. I would submit to you that bullying is a horrific a social mm -hmm. plight, that it's akin to what racism and sexism once were. And yes. we as society really need to figure out how to untangle that knot. So I chose two very opposite polar sides of um, the spectrum. And I play a very liberal, clear thinking, forward thinking, well, it'll all work out. That's how it's supposed to be. You know, I can pray and it'll all be that. And my brother, on the other hand, plays the opposite of it, saying violence is the answer. So we go through the exploration of this girl without my knowledge, uh, uh, taking his advice, and the uh, outcome is horrific. So the movie is called Brass Knuckles. The yes, I saw that. And I don't know if you're posting a link of that or not. Yes, it's a absolutely. Thing. And sadly, our fan base was mob genre-esque. So when we chose, when I wrote it, it was with that in mind. So it's R-rated and it's a little graphic with dialogue and also mm -hmm. pretty violent. And I thought that at the end of the movie, one would walk out and want to talk to somebody else about, wow, I've just had to rethink my entire ideals on what bullying is. So because that was the case, I felt that it was important. I, by exploring my own characteristics, I found that, I, you know what, I'm a bully. And we're all bullies, and I have been a bully. I wasn't an abusive fight you bully, but I was a sarcastic cutting wit. Yeah. And uh, the more I explored that side of me, the more I uh, felt culpable, and the more I saw things happening. My wife, Patty, is a first grade teacher in Broward County, and she sees a lot of things that are happening within the school systems and the cities and municipalities. And I decided that I would start a page that could hopefully untangle this knot. Right. And uh, Anthony Corone, A-N-T-O, and I, I'm sure you'll post a link, uh, Stop Bullying Now, initially um, was meant to find a solution so that people in an adult kind of forward-thinking way could get on and, and discuss it. And what has happened, it's turned into a salad of nonsense. Yes. It's a carnival. And so what I found, the more I go into it, that there 
what we as humans, well, I mean, I can go on and on. I don't want to be long-winded, but that's the short end of it. What I discovered is that, um, as I said, I'm an actor and I'm all of the things. I'm also father and I'm also son and I'm also brother and I'm also uh, a human, right? Yes. And I'm hoping that we all can be more humans. And what I am past all that is an organism. And all organisms, I don't care if it's a tree or a whelp in the litter, uh, has to, in a Darwinian sense, survive. Yes. And we are programmed genetically, every single living organism, regardless of how small in the kingdom of plants or the kingdom of animal, to uh, bully, if you want, if that's what you want to call it. And it's a survival of this fittest thing. And so we, as upper apex humans, uh, have the responsibility to cater to that weak link to some degree. But, and then there's the balance of how much is catering and how much of that catering is enabling. And so I've gone down into a huge, huge rabbit hole. And um, what I also found is there are competing pages. And some of them profess, I'm the biker against and I'll kick your butt if you this and you need to beat them and that's it. And it doesn't take into consideration that that's how drive-bys happen and that's how yes. wars happen. And what if you can't because you're in a wheelchair or you're handicapped or and on and on and on. And unless the onion is peeled back farther until we explore what it is as a society we need to do. Um, and what we, and and what we can and cannot tolerate, I, I don't think it'll end. Um, that's the sh long short answer. <laughs> um, I absolutely hear you, and and I agree. Um, I struggle every day um, when I see the posts. It's heartbreaking. You see so many posts of of kids who have either died by suicide or who have attempted. For example, uh, there's the nine-year-old boy right now on life support in Chicago who attempted to hang himself after being bullied relentlessly in the school, not responding. Um, I find it's become almost common. It's so common now, to, and it's horrible, because every time I... I go into social media, I get all the notifications about globally what is going on with kids with regards to suicide, bully side. And the last post was, I don't know what more I can say, because it seems like it is a societal problem, without a shadow of a doubt. It is a global problem. Um, and I... I've done it. I've started this podcast for that reason because I have gone on media. I have, I mean, I've been on more than 70 podcasts. <laughs> I've done workshops. I've done an online course. I, well, thank I you speak. very much for all of that. And so I think what we should do is focus on what we've discovered on our own by ourselves by looking at this society, whether it's my 20,000 pages, which by the way, now has. Uh, over 10 million views or your experience, we can look at it from a macro and we can see it as a societal thing, right? And right. as bad as the suicides are, you have to wonder. I mean, like I'm, I'm, I was born in the 50s. There was bullying then. Yes. No one killed themselves. Not every single day, not five-year-olds, not nine-year-olds, not eight-year-olds. So what are we as a society? What are we as parents? What have we done to make this world less resilient for ourselves? Oh, and I can tell you that in a nutshell. So, yes, I was bullied. So I was in schools, late 60s, 70s, I was bullied. Um, we have a new breed of bully. I call it the new genre of bully, where it's very rarely a bully it is a group of bullies. And the fact that bullying in teenage girls has increased significantly since 2014 is quite alarming because they go in, we call them the wolf packs. So they go oh, in a yes. pack and you have, as you know, it's been right? around forever. It's been around forever. No, but I think what's happened is it's when the we don't, you wish you were me club. It's the yes, same exact thing. Except, we didn't kill ourselves. Over no, 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 we didn't. But I think because of the world we're in today. So in your time, 
And in my time when I was being bullied, we didn't have internet. So we didn't have the cyberbullying. And as you know, cyberbullying has gone to the extreme because people are allowed to hide behind. And so we also have kids that are now got the total bully experience, right? You don't just get bullied in school, you go home and it's online and it's perpetual. And I think that in itself has led to an increase in the suicide, especially when we have kids killing themselves because their bullies tell them online. We're, I think we, we are both in a speculative place. Um, we can go on and on about our visions of what it is or what it isn't and why we think and why we don't. But until the psychoanalyst does and we do studies and we find out what it is. Well, exactly. but they have, right? They have. They have proven that cyberbullying is a direct contributory factor. Another so issue. let's explore that for a second. So okay. if, you're, if you're a person who's cyber bullied, I'm going to still say that your world is no mm -hmm. different than the world that was when I was in school. Your community is the community, whether it was a smaller one and you were behind groups or your church group or your private school or whatever it was. And this larger one is one that shouldn't have any more of an effect on that, but we want attention. We've become attention yes. magnets. Mm -hmm. And that's the sad part of it. And we, so I, I want to go through a variety of things. And the first thing that I hear often is this would never ha happen if our parents were better parents, if the, it's all the parents' fault. No. So I've seen many wonderful parents who don't even have any clue that their children have even done this. And, the, and it's not a parenting thing. And, and, and I have an answer for it. And the answer to it is that we, as a society, so need to, in mass, be completely intolerant of the first inkling of it. And if we don't have intellectual, emotional intelligence, and our school systems don't offer that to children, mm -hmm. and they don't tell them how to be resilient, sticks and stones may break our bones. I agree. And, that, and that this world right now that you're in won't last forever. You're only going to, this is a simple thing that you can easily work out of it. Maybe there is, when we talk about bad parenting, a lack of that support. Where it was like, oh my God, she's so, and, and that empathy is a further enabler for those people. I can give you an example. When my child were younger, if my son fell down and my wife ran over and said, oh my God, honey, are you okay? He would cry. But if he fell down and I went, get up, it's okay, just brush it off, there wasn't a tear in his eye. And maybe that's a smaller version of where we are now. Oh, 100% agree. And that's, I mean, what I'm trying to do is trying to get schools to go back to the, the core principles of teaching kids how to handle anxiety and stress and failure and being able to stand up for oneself. Instead, we have helicopter parents, right, who are just hovering and monitoring every single move. And basically, when you get kids that are wrapped up in cotton wool, how on earth are you going to expect them to fend when life all throws curveballs? Well, we've just alienated half of our audience here. And you know what? Part of that is, part of me wants to say, gee, I'm sorry that that's the case. And the other part of me wants to say, you know what? Um, that's kind of too bad. What I'd like to do is I'd like to read an open letter that I wrote to people that were part of my group. Because Absolutely. Because I found of the 20,000 people that I had, uh, a, a very, very small percentage of them even responded. And the, the three responses are what you're going to see here. So what I wrote to these people, uh, I couldn't get responses. I couldn't get any, I, I mean, it's amazing. There's so much apathy. There's so much yes. finger pointing and uh -huh. no one who points a finger um, has a solution. And so I submit, if you have a problem with what it is, then tell us your problem and then offer us your solution. And that doesn't happen. And so here's what my letter said, basically. Let's agree that every single one of you here are here to show support of victims or potentially offer solutions to stem this very, very troubling trend of bullying. Some call for and believe that prayer and spiritual involvement will stop it. Others that violence will. Yet others feel that someone else will fix it for them. <laughs> that repeatedly announcing this must end how terrible, terrible is all it takes. It's, it's much, much bigger than that. Yes. It's an epidemic. Mm -hmm. No one has the answer. I agree. Trying to find them here through your podcast, through my group, through a variety of other groups, hopefully with an adult-minded discussion. And everybody that posts here has the right intentions, I'd like to think. 
So Joe the plumber once says, you can't clean the sewer without smelling some, well. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so he's right. It is uncomfortable. It will and does take time, your collective time. And I asked to help me. And I said, no, no, you know what? Scratch that. Help society figure this out. And I'm begging you. Look at this page or this podcast or this movement as a slice of society in macro. Yes. There are two of us running what we do. We're volunteering. We can't police every part of it. This group that I have of 20,000 or more represents the world in theory at its best intention. And if a post is offensive, why are you not in mass shutting it down? Shutting it down with the same conviction that you'd like a teacher or an entire classroom or a school system or a bus full to do on your child's behalf. So many are outraged that I'm allowing certain behaviors on my page, that certain things are being said, and I've been bullied. Don't worry, I can handle oh, me too. those yeah. kinds of things. Me too. And controversy has been, I've been accused of bullying because I've said, no, wait, you're wrong. Think this way. And some may see this letter or this speech right here, in fact, as part of being bullied. And I can potentially be guilty of that. So I seldom do allow nonsense on my page when it's brought to my attention. But those types of posts prove to all of us that ugliness exists. Absolutely. And even in people with Ben's intentions. Yes. I can't protect them. I can't protect your Sally. I can't protect your Johnny. The village must. You, you are the village. I agree. It breaks my heart to read someone is saying it's inappropriate on my page and I'm leaving and this is terrible. This is not what I expected from an anti-bullying thing. And I want to ask you, what, what do you expect? I, I expect change. I want, I want often in my way of thinking, as should you. Yes. Sadly, very, very, very small number of these people read this and it took the time to. So I have a petition that I put out. You can find that. At I've Open signed that. Stuff. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that petition is a blanket petition. All it says is we as a society are intolerant of the status quo and we need change. That's all it says. I, and yes. And, and, and I think until we decide to enable this sort of new mindset, um, nothing will change. Nothing will change at all. We have people, there was a dwarf situation. where Yes, in Australia. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then because someone wanted likes and someone's page needed hits, they posted a version of this kid being 18 in a sketch. Yes. Yes. How many of you people have jumped on board of that and posted this little kids or whatever? And I then know. when you, and to this day, haven't said, you know what, I'm sorry. Wow, wow, wow. I'm ashamed of myself. I agree. That's the, you can't even do it amongst yourselves. And how do you expect your children to do it? And I think what's sad is, and this is also a problem, is that people are so quick to listen to what someone posts on social media without actually looking into the facts. Or lazy is a better word. Right. And w when I saw it, I thought, no, this can't be. And I actually spoke with it uh, over it with my assistant and we researched it because I thought, no, there's got to be more to this story. And yes, he, he genuinely was bullied and has been actually for many years. Yeah. But it was, again, the hatred that came out in some of the posts. And this went all over social media. So it wasn't just in your, po in your Facebook page. No. This was all over social media. And th there is such a... a and a nastiness and ugliness of humankind that there really is. And this is pervasive throughout society. And yes, I mean, I, I have no easy solution. I believe, I yes. you know, I believe by educating, by getting people to stand collectively and saying this is unacceptable, there must be change. That's what I'm hoping to do. Um, so that's, here's what I've chosen. Here's what okay. I've chosen. This is what I represent. This is what I'm lobbying for. I have just aligned myself with a woman out of South Africa, wonderful gal who has gotten a brilliant idea. And her idea is a national registry. Let's talk about national first. We are in a, we are in a world where every school, sometimes in certain states, compete against every other school yes. in its own school district. 
Mm -hmm. right? So the school doesn't want to report their incidents because it affects their safety record yes. or yes. their rating or whatever. Oh, their funding, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So if there was a national protocol that was established in the schools that the schools had nothing to do with but follow, um, and that's a difficult thing, and that's going to take time, and that's going to take a lot of people, and, and, and what it will take is for me to take my place into a nonprofit. And when I circulated my petition, do you know I, I, how many people said, yeah, now you know what, I'm going to sign that. These nonprofit people, all they want to do is make money. The people are making money. I'm going to tell you right now, this Facebook page that I have has cost us $2,000 out of my pocket. Right. And in order for me to get uh, any kind of lawyer to help me out, I have to be a not for profit thing so that right. they can validate who I am. So I'm going to catch 22 right now. Yes. So this registry, I think the registry that she's submitting is that there should be a place where children between the ages of uh, six and 13 can go on, this is not, you don't need the school's approval, you don't need anything's approval. You go on, you go on Google, you go on whatever it is, and you talk or you type into it what yes. has happened to you. Yes. And if there are three strikes against the same person, that person is listed as, a, as an initial so that there's a database of it. So anyone whose child's bullied in any school at all should first of all make sure that there's a record of it, that has to report that child. And Must. that child should be somewhere placed in there. And then in addition to that, they have the responsibility to call the school district and alert them to the fact that it happened without the school um, squashing it. And then lastly, they need to report it to the police. I agree. I agree. In place, we're in a place where if our parents, our parents are responsible for our children's actions. I mean, if somebody was a vandal and he broke a bunch of windows, I'm going to have to pay if this was my child. I'm going to have to pay for those damages. There's no culpability for the parents for their children's behavior. And so the more uncomfortable it becomes for the parent, the more on top of it the parent is going to see. Mm -hmm. Far too many parents just bury their head in the sand and say, it's not, you know, it, there's two sides to it. It's not my, my guy reacted to her and she reacted mm -hmm. to me and all of that. Yeah. So yeah. there should be cameras in every classroom. There should be cameras in every hallway. If there isn't with all the shootings, I can't imagine why. I agree. There should be able to be validated. I agree. My wife is a teacher, as I said. If she wants to break up a fight, she could easily lose her job. If she grabs Johnny by the collar to pull yeah. him off of Dobby, uh -huh. and, the, and, and mom says, you touched my son. How dare you touch my son? And yet those same people are saying, that's the school's responsibility. Where was the teacher? Where was the bus driver? The bus driver makes $10 an hour and is responsible for the safety of 50 children on his bus. His job is not to get out and yank somebody off somebody else. Maybe we need school monitors on the bus. Right. And the bus systems will say, well, it's not our responsibility after it leaves the yard. And yeah. I'll say, look at your bus. It's your bus. Say, Broward County Schools, it's your responsibility. So we have to, and we are taxpayers. Yes. Public schools are public schools. And if we, all of us, insist that this will happen, then maybe it'll change. We need more guidance counselors. We need more guidance counselors on both of them. The parents need to be in a position where they're so imposed on. Maybe they have to come in, and this is a terrible example, but they have to come in and sit in the classroom at a desk and just be there for an entire day and call off work. Or there's people who submit that you should bring back paddling. I don't know if that's the answer, but uh, I can submit that there's some, uh, you know, respect is fear. I don't think these children today have either. Uh, many of them. Oh, no, all of them. they don't. And that's why I go back to kids today do not have core values instilled in them. They don't, you know, respect, compassion, kindness, understanding. Um, you know, that's why the bullying we have, you know, racism is, is getting worse. It's, it's increasing again. It's like we're, we're sliding back into a dog eat dog kind of environment. And I think, as you said, en masse, we can create change. When I speak to parents who say, oh, my daughter's being bullied, or I know my daughter's friend is being bullied in class, and I say to them, well, why aren't you going to school talking to the principal? Why are you going to the PTA? As a group of parents saying, this is unacceptable. My child may not be, be bullied. She isn't the bully, but why aren't you supporting other parents and all the students in that class to say no more bullying.
Okay, so here's the second part of this tier, right? So it, with cameras in classroom, cameras in the hallways, this national register that I'm talking about, I would like to, I would like to make it a policy across the nation that any child that goes to school has to sign a contract. And that contract basically says uh, to the parent, you have discussed what bullying is, you have mm -hmm. discussed what sexism is, what racism is, you yeah. have discussed all of those things with your child, and you're checking off on it in an affidavit kind of truthful way that that in fact has happened. If I, I receive this form, your kid can't come to school, whether you pay for it or not as a public person, right? Right. And in addition to that, then there'll be a bunch of rules. We have a zero tolerance for X, Y, and Z. We have zero tolerance for a variety of things. And once those rules are broken, your child will pay the consequence. And if you right. don't sign off on this, you kid can't go to school. Right. That's what needs to happen. That's truly what needs to happen. We've gotten to a place where we're not giving the, 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 we're forcing, so here's another part of this continuum. Schools were schools when they were pretty much uh, a, a demographic, a, a mix of the whole demographic. Mm -hmm. And then um, homeschooling became something that a lot of folks felt that they could cloister their children from uh, the general population and take them home and put them further under their wing and that they were going to protect them from a myriad things. And uh, that has potentially worked. But what it's done is it's taken a good core demographic out of the schools themselves. And right. then magnet schools have happened. And those magnet schools are in the same school district and then those schools pull the A and B students out. And then the A and B students now uh, aren't there. So the school systems rate your A class now to a D class or a C right. class. And the teachers get penalized. for it. But it's their own school system that has done that to them. Yes, I know. And then they have, and then they have gifted classes. And these gifted people are put into a place where they are protected and they are coddled and they are brought up and their workflow is heavier. And they're gifted. And they're put in a class that's gifted. Now, why are the people on the other end of that gift, those special needs gifted people, not given that same opportunity? I agree. So what you have now left in the schools, in the public schools, is I don't want to say the dregs, but I will say a, a lot of people who can't afford those. And a lot of parents, and this is a terribly touchy thing, I know what the civil, you know, the, the national handicap movement is, and I get all of that, but there are some people who are so disruptive to the flow and so on the spectrum so heavily that it's a disadvantage, and we have to then, our children sometimes have to tolerate that. Well, you know, Sarah's loud. Sarah's throwing a pencil at me. Well, Sarah's allowed to because Sarah, Sarah's, you know, special. Right. Why does this person have to tolerate Sarah's specialness? We should have a standard thing, and, and, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate mail for that, but the reason why all of these things is happening is because the new normal in schools is, is, is a salad of, of volatility, basically. Yes. I mean, certainly there are lots of parents that will say, um, my child has ADHD or my child has autism spectrum disorder and they are entitled to go into this public school and go into this classroom. I understand the need and I exactly hear what you're saying. I'm being devil's advocate here. I understand that. But unless there is um, something in the schools where that person can have a teacher's aid or a support person that's able to manage their behaviors, remove them from the situation when outbursts begin, then, as you said, we have a hotbed, right? Because we have kids that are not learning, who are getting very frustrated, who are in close confines, and I can see how all hell breaks loose, for want of a better word. So there is, uh, unfortunately, both combatants are put in a place where they're equally culpable. Mm -hmm. In Florida, there's a stand your ground law as an adult. If you feel threatened, you're allowed to fight back. Kids cannot. 
if someone's being bullied and harassed and they punch someone back to help them stop it, that child will get written up and they're both treated equally. And that's an unfair policy, but I don't know what the answer to that is. So what I think the people who are egging this on, back when I was in school, there was, oh, I'm going to fight you after school. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll fight you after school. So it got around that so-and-so and so-and-so are going to fight after school. I didn't want to fight after school. He probably didn't want to fight after school, but everybody knew there was a fight, so we had no choice but to fight. Anyone who f- tapes this and eggs this on via social media is an accessory to it. Of course it is. And, and I yeah. think at some point they should have, maybe they lose their phone. If you take these kids' phone away, could you imagine how flipped out they'd be? Oh, but I mean, <laughs> I, I agree, but it, it is creating the monster that is now before us. And um, bystanders are as bad as the bully. Absolutely, because yeah, when... They're accessories. Right, they're accessories. If you rob a bank and you stand outside and, and you're a lookout, you're an accessory. You exactly. Go to jail for it. And you need to be culpable. There needs to be somebody responsible for it. And the parents need to pay the price for their kids. It's not inconvenient for the kid. You know, back, if, if I had to stay over for a suspension, it was inconvenient. Somebody had to come and pick me up, somebody had to leave work early. Half of these kids, there are no policy. They don't even have a policy for what punishes it. Did you hear about the six year old girl that got arrested in Orlando? Arrested? I heard. No. No. So, yeah, no. Okay. So there was a girl who uh, had a sleeping disorder and she was disruptive. And so they tried whatever the protocol was to have the girl settle down. And they, the teacher gave her, I'm going to call the principal. And ultimately she said, okay, fine. You had your chance. And the principal couldn't get it to happen either. So they called the on-site security, which is the law enforcement guy. And that guy came in and he handcuffed this little six-year-old with zip ties and put her in the back of the car while she squealed and cried. And everyone was horrified that the Gestapo came and took a six-year-old girl out of a class and oh my god how can they okay so if we peel back that onion um, to its least common denominator and backward engineer it I asked uh, some very good friends of mine including my wife what the protocol is there if that girl is that disruptive then a teacher and an aide would remove her and what if the girl doesn't want to be removed well then she gets picked up and carried out Okay, so if she gets picked up and carried out, aren't there some parents who are going to say, oh, look at the bruise on my Sarah's arm. How dare you touch my doll? What is the answer? If when you have, as a parent, if you want to be that, I don't even know the word is. Uh, I can't even tell you what the word is. That, what is the word? That adamant about these kinds of things not happening to your children, then you need to propose a better idea. Yes. Because that kid can't go around throwing erasers and books at somebody. I'm not saying this child did, but it's a disruptive thing and they have to be taken up and they have to be physically restrained. And to me, my question is, when you're enrolling your kids in these school, you are, you are handing them over for a very large part of the day to hopefully trusted adults who are going to work their, their minds and educate them and empower them. Why are they not, when they enroll them in the class, going through things, saying to them, okay, so this is our bully, our, our no bullying policy. That's exactly what I right. suggested with before they right. even go to school. Yes, that has right. to happen. Right. This is, if your child is disruptive in class, this exactly. is our process. Do you agree? Yes. If you do not agree, then please note below what process you would like us to follow. Be- there's so many legalities attached to me. It's common sense. Why is this, even if it's a booklet with lots of pages, parents should have to go through it, initial, sign, date, I that's, agree. That's, that's, the, that's the thing that I'm pitching. That's what I'm going to be designing. That's what I'm going to try to get uh, us as a human being world to get to Congress. Um, so... Look, here, here's the bottom line. If I let's just say that I was going to uh, say a, a racist or a ses- sexist joke in in mixed company, and uh, I was laughed at, and I was laughed at, and the joke was funny, and everybody went ha ha ha. It would give me the permission to tell another one. Of course it will. But if I told that joke and the people were horrified by it, and I was chastised by it, and I was and I was booed off the work yeah. out of the room and asked to leave. Would I think twice about ever, ever telling a joke like that? Of course you will. That proves my in mass mob mentality. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. So um, there are people who submit that paddling may be an option. 
Um, there are some states that are bringing it back. So corporal punishment is, and here's the reaction. Listen, I can't even spank my own kid. So how could you spank my kid? But let's say we're in a middle school scenario or a junior high school scenario, and someone is in a position where they've done something that would warrant whatever the policy is to be, let's call it suspended for three days. So mom and dad have to take off work for three days to make sure Johnny stays home and whatever, doesn't have parties at the house or whatever it is, or they give him a choice. If you come, you can either, we'll give him three paddles on his butt or he can be suspended for three days. Then maybe the parent would go, well, let me think. Now maybe I don't want to take off work for three days. So maybe I will green light paddle. There are scenarios that may work or may not work, but uh, I'm not sure if paddling is the one. No, and it's a slippery slope, right? It's a uh, violence thing. And we're yes. back to that. It's a fighting back thing. It teaches the wrong stuff to the, the wrong people. Violence is not the answer. No. I don't know what the answer is. Apparently in Texas, they have reintroduced it. I saw there was some news stories on it. Um, no, you know, violence begets violence. So I, I, I struggle with that. But I think it's, it's got to be education and accountability. Um, and the accountability has to stand with the school too. If they have a, st a no bully policy and something is reported, then they must act on it. And parents have a well, response. It's a word against your word against their word. And that's the problem that they're having. There aren't witnesses that are credible. There is not videotapes of it. I mean, uh, it's it, it's a I, I, I see what you're saying and I also see that really here we're right back to where we've gone through a myriad ways of your version and my version and oftentimes we're on the same page and sometimes we're not on the same page but what we do I think agree on is that it has to change right? it has to and what we do agree on is there should be a national protocol that everybody gets that everybody adheres to and until that happens we won't change and so we, the collective we, however your audience is, whatever my audience is, now have to figure out a way to do something. So on my page, I've said, people, this must stop. I can't handle this. It's terrible. And I said to them, what are you doing about it? Have you started a group? Have you formulated a petition? Have you gone to a PTA meeting? Just saying it, it's not going to do anything. Yes. Yeah, I agree. There has to be action, and I, what, and not just on your side. I've seen on many, many sites there are so many people that press the likes, do a smiley face, do a crying face, but they're not. But then they go back to their social media sites or their TV, and life goes on as normal. And it's like, no, we have a responsibility. We've got to do something because we're changing kids' lives forever if we're allowing this bullying behavior to continue. It shapes them. I mean, so research between, is, you know, go on, sorry. Between podcast and, and, my and the people that are listening to it and their groups, there must be a lawyer, a team of lawyers who can pro bono craft a, a, a petition and get it or somehow lobby it to whatever. Um, you can urge your state to make it a mandate. Hundred percent. And once one state does it, maybe it's easy to done, and everyone could follow through, like price wars and airlines. So who knows? But something has to happen, and I can't make it all happen, and you can't make it. All no, happen. and that's we why collectively can. That's why I have so many different representatives from different areas regarding bully. I have politicians coming on to talk about this. I mean, in Kansas... Well, you ask them what their feelings are, Katie. Oh, absolutely. And in Kansas, they are introducing changes. I mean, now their school districts and their school boards, they actually have rep a bully representative on there that parents can contact. And then there are lawyers that are actually now acting on behalf because, Definitely. right, because there are certain laws that can be broken, but also there's funding. They can remove funding and funding is big. Well, and on that note, if you want to get a levy pass to have more teachers or more guidance counselors, there's a lot of people in that community that aren't going to green like that. So maybe the first thing we have to think about, are we too soft? Maybe, you know, like, here's a story. One of my guys, uh, reached out to me and I'll make it very short. He said, listen, I was a very fat kid when I was younger and I was bullied when I was a fat kid. And he said, I think today, if I was a fat kid and I came home, mom would say, oh, you're not fat, Bobby. Here, have some ice cream. But it angered me enough that I went home and I worked out and I lost weight. And I thank those people to some degree because I may be dead from diabetes right now at 60 years old. 
but I lived a clean and healthy life. And I'm not saying that that's an example of what it is, but what I am saying that this resilience factor that we as a society need to get to a place where as much as we're teaching our children not to bully, we need to teach our children that sticks and stones may break their bones. And it's not as devastating as it is. And I can give you, I'm from Cleveland, right? So we had a, an Indian, Chief Wahoo, on our baseball hats. And because of a handful of, of Native Americans who thought that this was a comic thing, we had to remove that logo yes. from, our, from our uniforms. And the reason why we were called the Indians was because the first Native American Indian played center field for that team, and that was why it was. And we lived on Lake Erie, which was a tribes of many, many. Yeah. But what we've done is we've allowed five people relative to the mm -hmm. millions of people dictate what has to happen. And we, and, I, and here's another version of it. I was on a plane and there was a, a lady that got on with a full, full grown American bulldog sitting on her lap. And I said, ding, ding, Whoa. ding, what's this? what's this? And she said, oh yeah, uh, this is her comfort pet. She it's support pet, support yes. Support pet, she has her support pet. And I said, well, why, why, I don't know what you're saying. Well, it gets to sit on her lap this entire trip. And, and I said, okay, so that makes her comfortable, right? Yes, and that's the point of it, yeah. Well, what about my comfort? Why, why do I have to sacrifice my comfort here for this woman's inability to cope? And I know that's a terrible thing to say, but she's now encroached on me. And I think this weak leak thing that we're talking about is something that's really hurting us as a society. Oh, in an we're we're striving so hard to be politically correct that the irony is we're so politically incorrect now. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm sure a lot of people think I have been on this. You know, but um, I kind of don't care, honestly. I'm no, really and you Change know has what? to happen, and it's no, not going to be easy. And I 100% support you, and I think. The only way we can do it is by people getting together and everyone has different thoughts and feelings, but we all work towards the common purpose, which is bullying has got to stop. It must be dealt with and we've got to make a start somewhere because it's becoming absurd. How much more time do we have? We have five minutes. Oh, good. So here's what I'd like to do in the last five minutes. So you're gonna <laughs> you have to go for it. Hundred percent. Everybody that's listening to it to raise their right hand and repeat after me. Pledge. I've listened to what this is, and I understand the complexities of what it is that needs mm -hmm. to happen. And I promise that I'm going to go out of my comfort zone a little bit to help make change happen. Because whether my kids are grown, it may be my grandkids, at some point in life, I'm going to be affected by this. And I'm going to wish a community stepped in and helped on my behalf. I, I swear, I 100% agree. Because, and this is what I'm trying to help educate people. If we don't deal with it now, you're 20 years down the road, he may the high school bully may be carjacking you or may be assaulting you or it's going to have a ripple effect and it's and it's one of the reasons why we're struggling in society today as it is but no i 100 percent hear you together we are stronger and more powerful kumbaya <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, you know, really, I, I, all I am is a moderator. What I try to do is stay objective. Sometimes I'm stirring the pot to let people see how uh, off the charts they may be. I'm not an expert. I'm certified in bully prevention by the, you know, by the government. Um, but I'm not a psychiatrist. And there are people who contact me every day. What can I do? How can I this? You know, I don't have the answer for you. And I, and I, and I feel sorry that you're in this position. But I think if we as a society all pitch in, uh, we can't ever make it go away because it's an No, trait. no. But, but if we, we can could. Negate it. We can do less of it. We can help each other and, and love each other. And like they say, man, kindness. And, uh, and, and we're all works in process. You can talk to a lot of people that tell you, oh my God, this guy, this guy's an anti bully now. Whoa. <laughs> you should see some of the stuff he does. I'm amused by some of that. I'm sorry. Some of it, you know what I mean? I'm a work in progress. We all are. We all are. We all are. As long as we're cognizant and we keep trying, I think that's where we're at. I 100% agree. And at the end of the day, respect and kindness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much. No, thank you for taking time. I know you're really, really busy, and I greatly appreciate it. No, never and too busy for this. Never too busy for this. Thank you so much. And yes, it'll be interesting to see when we air it, the comments, and because it'll be put also on your Facebook page. It'll be interesting to see what comes back and what, if any, we, you know, maybe we can learn from some of the observations that are made as well. Yeah, and I'll tell you if I got kicked out of the house and I'm in the doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, God bless Anthony. You. Thank you so thank much you. for all of your hard energy. We, we love you. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's Anthony been great. Carone, stop bullying now. Brass Knuckles on Vimeo. It's very simple. Brass Knuckles slash Vimeo. A joke's flick. Watch that. It's a little horrific. But uh, engage. Please, please, please engage. Absolutely. And after the end of this, all your social media links and uh, Facebook page will be up for everyone to connect with. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Anthony Carone has been an actor in Hollywood for over 25 years, usually playing as the rugged, slightly imposing and domineering types of military men, officers of the law, and mobsters. He's played in films like Bad Boys 2, We Own the Night, I Love You, Philip Morris, and more. As a writer and producer, Anthony also won the latest Best Short Film category with his film Brass Knuckles Discussing Bullying. Anthony spends much of his personal time fighting bullying, working on workshops, and volunteering at local schools to discuss bullying issues with children. Anthony also has started his Stop Bullying Now campaign on social media that's gained over 20,000 followers. You can find all of his info as an actor, producer, and writer on imdb.com. You can also find his latest short film, Brass Knuckles, discussing bullying at vimeo.com, along with many short talks discussing bullying and other topics on Anthony's YouTube channel. Find the anti-bullying campaign on Facebook at Anthony Carone's Stop Bullying Now. Again, that's Anthony Carone's Stop Bullying Now on Facebook. So welcome back, and I hope you all took note of all the various links we just posted to help you connect with Anthony Coroni. Um, it was a really great interview. I do enjoy listening to other people's thoughts and uh, suggestions on how we can all come together and try and deal with bullying, especially bullying in schools that's impacting our children teenagers. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast and please do check out Anthony's Facebook page. Um, the more people we have joining the group, the better. Also, please, even if you don't live in the United States, consider signing his petition. It is really important and he is trying to elicit significant change across the United States, especially in schools. And also, um, even though the movie is R-rated, um, please take a look at the movie. Um, again, very, very interesting and a very raw um, depiction of the impact of bullying. So thank you again for joining my podcast, Engage, Educate and Empower. This is your host, Tracy Maxfield, saying ta-ta for now. Join me again next Thursday with another awesome guest. Bye-bye.